Hey, how's it going? <clears throat> so, I've had this uh, phrase sort of going through my head for a couple of weeks. And normally what I do when something like that happens is, well, I'll think about it and I'll try to be like, well, what's that about? And then if that doesn't really lead anywhere, I'll write out. I'll just start writing about it or, you know, just trying to work through it. And I did that. I didn't want to do it. Like, usually I want to know what the heck's going on and I'll just do it. And I just kind of was like, well, I don't want to do that. So eventually I did do it because it's just staying around. And I haven't, I'm going to say what it is in a minute. And I have an idea. Oops. Crap. I'm going to start over. Well, maybe I won't start over here. Oh. There, I don't know if it even makes any difference, but I forgot to plug in the microphone. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> the phrase. I didn't know what to do with it. I mean, I, on the surface, it seems like pretty obvious, but I kept thinking about it and I was like, that's not quite it. So, the phrase was, is... There's too much of everything for there to be just one thing. Now you could see, I would think, that that is something that you could take a lot of ways. And so I just kind of was trying to work through like all of the ways and see what is this supposed to mean to me. So... <clears throat> I've just been kind of letting it stew. <laughs> and while that's been going on, obviously other stuff is. And one of the things was, it's, I didn't think it was connected to this at all, but what do I know? <laughs> so uh, I like to do my little movie things. If you have watched my channel or look at the... <sighs> Uh, the videos or whatever that they're actually on my channel before you click on a video you can see what's there to look at and a lot of it's about movies or television or thing you know yeah so um this is like that but not quite that and uh so bruce willis bruce willis has provided me a lot of entertainment over the years and Part of that entertainment factor is the guy himself. So when he first came onto the scene, and I think that this is interesting in light of what Stephen, Go <laughs> Stephen Colbert said last night on the show. Uh, this would be Thursday night, uh, 1110. And he said that when people make it, um, I guess I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, when people make it and they don't pay their dues, it bothers him. And I have had an experience of my own that where I ran into this, like, because of novelty, mostly, <laughs> well, almost entirely, <laughs> something I was involved with gained a spark of notoriety and we it was a band and we played alongside with some people that were very reluctant to play with us it was just the way the bill got booked it wasn't like i personally had anything to do with it but <clears throat> aside from our manager i was the person that was visible out there to talk to and this particular notable person and his band he really had a problem with like us playing with their band and i was like one time i was like i want to get we had a bill that we were allowed to pick who we wanted to play with and they were like one of my dream picks and oh boy when i asked them did i get a tongue lashing <laughs> so um when did i start talking about them or that I don't know, maybe it'll come back to me. I'll circle around or something. But anyway. Oh, uh, nope, not yet. <laughs> but yeah, 
there's too much everything to be just one thing. And so, uh, I just apply it to, like, oh, Bruce Willis and the not paying your dues. Whew, I'm glad I remembered. And they say weed messes up your memory. I gotta tell you, when I concentrated, it started to, like, be you know, remember. It, it didn't, it's not an effect either way, <laughs> as far as I can tell. I just have to, like, snap to it, you know? So, anyway... When Bruce Willis, as far as I knew, first came on the scene, it was in Moonlighting. And I forget the actual story, but he had been a bartender. And I don't know if it was like a dare or to get a girl or a fluke or if he actually wanted to pursue an acting career. But he showed up to audition for Moonlighting. And I don't think he had any credits before that. And he got the job. So that's what I was saying about... Colbert and this other person, they get all bent out of shape when people like are able to skip the hard stuff and get to an elevated position. And by the way, if that happens to you, it should not be ignored that like you don't know what dues they paid or didn't pay <laughs> that person to get to where they are. Or maybe not even that they actively did the whatever dues they paid doing with getting someplace in mind, you know, uh, there's no rules really as far as stuff like that happens. So then and now I'm kind of like, wow, uh, you know, you, you got your own thing going on and really like what I wanted to do with that band, like it wasn't going to hurt them in any way. Uh, but yeah. So he came onto the scene, Bruce Willis, kind of a nobody. And I remember in the press, like critics, they were skeptical of him. Like, who is this guy? He has no credentials. He had a whole hell of a lot of personality. And he really isn't and wasn't like super handsome, good looking guy. He's okay, you know. Um, but personality, charisma, guys got it like in spades. And so starting from there, he's and he's shown himself to have a lot of staying power. So do schmooze, the guy's got what it takes. Sorry if you don't like it. And speaking of what you may or may not like about him, he is part of a, a sort of a cadre of actors that are like right-leaning, politically-minded, but wow, there are so many levels and there's like 50 shades of Republican or conservative or right-leaner, whatever it is. There's a spot on my glasses, it's really distracting me. But um, the group that he's part of, I don't find to be the most like reactionary or kind of heinous because you can also find those groups man <laughs> like drooling <laughs> sorry about that um but and bruce willis i read uh, used to be like a uh, what is the guy that was a Democrat and he was in the tank and he wore the helmet and even though the guy was a soldier and that's probably what he wore when he was working like on in you know as a soldier wherever the war was what was his name <laughs> great I should have looked this up before I started doing this but usually I can remember the guy's name it'll come to me but that politician, after that tank picture, it, everybody was like, no, can't do it. Get out of here. You're the worst. Like, the things they came up with against this guy were so ridiculous sounding. I, I don't think I was old enough to vote when that happened, but I was like, dang, I really want to vote because this is lame. He's, the guy was all right. God, dark hair, I think Greek name. It's going to come. Anyway. Uh, 
so that makes me think like well uh he leaned like kind of the way that i do at one time i don't know what happened to make him go the other way it seems like a lot of times that's kind of a financial decision and then i don't know what happens to people that they just start leaning into the things that are less attractive uh oh now you work oh okay anyway uh it's less attractive t uh, by my uh reckoning so anyway but uh there's all these other groups and then they're likely to get a rise out of you and make us say something we maybe don't even necessarily really mean because i'm not going to say that i agree with this but a lot of people think like on the left that these other people on the right that are so reactionary and right now really like heated up and inflamed and wanting to like break shit basically that's a part of it you know and i'm sure like there's a, not a corresponding faction of that on the left but something also not quite corresponding with the collective whole of like the right and i don't know what's going on with the right or the collective whole of either party really but i don't know what's going on with the right uh i know it, i feel like it's kind of like the police the like the actual like people driving around in the cars with guns and stuff they uh they're like a reflection of society in a way like they're kind of sort of trapped in this identity and it's like on that side of the aisle you, you can't uh like step out of line you you have to conform entirely or something and man that's crazy to me that like i i just can't <laughs> I can't go for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, Sylvester Stallone, who I don't think I've ever heard him express anything politically, but like the company you keep kind of thing. And then there's like Red, the Red movies and Deplorables and i enjoy all of those things so these guys that i just am talking about like this sort of clutch of actors that i include bruce willis as part of are not like pure flicks people <laughs> i don't think like if they are they keep it to themselves which makes it a lot easier for me to just keep going to see their product because i enjoy it and i've seen like all of the reds and all of the deplorables and a lot of the movies from the actors that i mentioned and so i'm not really sure how this uh, attaches to this phrase but they are part of the everything and maybe they're ha they have things that people would find fault with about their personal leanings or whatever like the political things like that really affects a lot of people where they're just like oh i just can't even look at that person anymore and I, my feeling is is as long as i don't have to hear complaints about woke in the movie or just the sort of sloganry that's kind of ugly and divisive i don't want to hear that in the movie okay award shows are different but in the movie, if you put that in there, it's a turnoff for me. <clears throat> but I will watch these guys because I've gotten years of entertainment and pleasure from what they do. Bruce Willis, the reason why I chose him is because he recently had this, this uh, neurological disorder strike him that's, you know, taking away his ability to do his job. And um, that just is like heart-wrenching god this spot on my glasses is driving me nuts hold on here we just okay maybe now i can concentrate oh god still drooling so 
When Bruce Willis's diagnosis first came out, the thing I thought of immediately was the fifth element. Because if you will recall, that character did not want to do much more than grunt most of the time. And, oh my god, I still didn't get it. How annoying! <laughs> oh my god. So, um, I mean, am I alone in that? <clears throat> and then also... If you followed his career and seen any of his, I gotta say, kind of disastrous interviews, disastrous for the host, really, and for the, like, studio audience, there was a time that would have pissed me. <laughs> there was a time that would have really bothered me if I would have gone somewhere and this was the guest that came out, especially if I was really into that the way that I am, uh, like Bruce Willis. I, I mean, I would have been disappointed, disappointed, but a lot of time has passed and I have learned, oh my God, hold on. Okay, I'm, I'm going insane. It must be the reflection of my eye or something, although it's never happened this way before. I just put almost straight vinegar on my lenses. I'm just going to try to soldier on. Okay, so, um, the interviews, like, uh, I don't know if it's, like, his personality, that seems kind of weird that his personality would be, like, I'm reticent to speak. The guy was a bartender, and, like I said, charisma and personality, that has to come out some way, and it's not usually, like, mental, you know, <laughs> they have to say stuff. Um, so it makes me wonder, or not even wonder really, because, well, let me finish my sentence. It makes me wonder if it wasn't that, oh, right, if it wasn't that uh, illness sort of starting, it's like slowly in sputters or something, because I have something that... Um, has me it's like bad enough that I'm on social security so it has affected me in certain ways and it when I look back over time of like my health certain things that also are features of what I finally got to the doctor and found out that I had after it literally paralyzed half of my body because at the time I lived in California and you couldn't have insurance and you probably still can't now easily unless you pay exorbitantly for it or you have like one of those magic unicorn jobs that gives you insurance anyway I had to like leave the state and apply multiple times before I actually got it and I should have gotten it the first time but anyway when I look back at my past, some of the symptoms that I have, I've had since I was a child. And this didn't take me out until <clears throat> when I was 26. So, it just makes me think, obviously I'm not a doctor. But, I know from experience that a lot of times they do not recognize things the first time they certainly for some reason are unwilling to listen to you when you're the one coming to them with the problem and you live in the body with the symptoms and things happening to you they're like skeptical they don't want to believe you but once I moved to where I am now I got the help I needed like across the board although to finally get the social security I did have to get the help of a lawyer which <laughs> When I got the final approval from the judge, he even said there's no reason you should have had to go through all this or waited this long. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm thinking that maybe all of the grunting and not wanting to speak was either he knew it was happening or he didn't know it was happening. Either way, I can see how he wouldn't want to have it known that there was a problem being able to speak, you know? So, 
all I can say, like, that's it. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, I, well, I guess I have more to say. <laughs> um, but I have compassion for the guy because uh, he, he seems like a good guy, you know, like if you are a person in his circle that he cares about. I don't know about all outside of that because I've noticed certain things about him that kind of give me pause. Like, I've been following this guy pretty closely. Like, it didn't have a meaning the way it does now that it did, like, just paying attention to his career and being a fan, basically. But I have been following his career for years, and whatever he may be like as a person that you meet on the level of fan to the guy, it seems like he's a good friend, right? He has lots of famous friends, and they have to kind of stick together because they all have to kind of, like, find connection in the world away from, like, everyone that's a fan. Uh, and uh, his family life and e even, like, his dating life, because I used to watch TMZ all the time. Like, <laughs> you find out a lot about people. <laughs> but he just seemed like once you hooked up with him in whatever function, in whatever way, he was a good guy to have on your side, and um, I like that. I admire that in people, and I would like to see more of it everywhere, like in my life, in everyone's life. Uh, not going to get into the whole discussion about what's in the way of those things for like everybody, because I can't speak for everybody, <laughs> but you can sample everything. No pun intended, that's my actual last name. Someone questioned that if that whether that was my real name and I'm like, no no, that's that is my real name. But maybe we can't know all of everything. Um and maybe we have to kind of reconcile ourselves to that and understand that we don't have a grasp on everything that everybody knows is going through, enjoys, doesn't enjoy. We, unless we have like close connections or a communication, we just put stuff on people and I call it 2 d because you take away all of the dimensions except for the one that's right in front of you that you're looking at and having an impression about and uh, an opinion about and there's too much of everything. <laughs> For there to be just one thing, just our thing, just our impression, just our way, like, for a long time, a lot of factors made that the thing that happens in a lot of places to varying degrees, like, we don't have a situation here in America, here, for us, it's very scary and stark and we're like kind of stunned and shocked at what's going on but my gosh dudes <laughs> look outside of this country this is like nothing <laughs> you know we're such snowflakes <laughs> but anyway um yeah i mean like i think in order to not have a lot of the problems we have as people because we got bigger problems than what we got against each other the, especially if we don't know each other we got we got something to get somebody we don't know we don't know we don't know we don't know but if we just like maintain our own deal like tend our own gardens sail our own ships you know we have to interact and stuff with people we have to it helps the world function <laughs> It helps us function. Like, we get something out of it, like, psychically. Not woo psychic, but, like, psyche. <laughs> Psychically out of it, you know? And we just put a lot of barriers between ourselves, and I don't think enough compassion. So... Thank you to Bruce Willis for years of enjoyment, and my heart goes out to you, man. Like, this is a, a big deal, but it's like a major stepping stone in your life, and you seem to be handling it well. 
and with grace with your family and it's a beautiful thing to see and uh, now I can go watch the peripheral yes yeah okay thank you and good night no oh, I missed again <laughs>